of God is a, is a part of him. And, and if you're going to receive the fullness of the Lord, you have to receive the wealth of God. Abundance is a place of the Lord's will that he brings you into through your faithfulness, through your obedience, through your honor. And he has a money plan for everybody's life. Specifically, he has one for you, for you to receive his abundance and the supplies of his abundance constantly, every month, every week, every day, every hour, every year. You'll be shocked to know that everybody was supposed to accumulate a certain amount of money every year. You'll be shocked that you were supposed to sow an amount of seeds every year. And as you become led by the Holy Spirit, it becomes easier for you to access. It becomes a definite. It becomes perfected that you access the will of God on how to live in his abundance. I come to give you life and life more abundantly. The abundance of God is a place where he gives you things, provisions that have no budget to it, no lack to it, no limitation to it, no shortages to it. He wants to bring you into places of provisions that are greater than what you see in your job. As a matter of fact, everybody's job is a testing place. It's where the Lord tests your, your faithfulness. He tests your focus. He tests your purity. He tests your sanctification. He tests your uh, submission. He tests your attitude. That's what your job does. It's a testing of your soul. But your job is not the finale of money that comes to you. But it determines the unlocking of money that comes to you. That's why I told you that when people get jobs, like they start trying to date and do all this other stuff. And that's a curse. It's a curse when God gives you a job and you flip the narrative of the job and the theme of the job to something else that is carnal and wicked. Because that the, it, your job is a part of your story to get you to the next phase of, 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 your, of your life, the chapters of your life. Divine mental health shows God that you're ready for financial wealth. So it's very important how you deal with people. How do you deal with sinners? What do you do when you get in the presence of sinners? Do you sin with sinners? Because look what the Bible says in Proverbs chapter 13, verse 22. It says that the wealth of the sinner is laid up for the just. So just think about it. If you are a sinner, the Holy Spirit is not in partnership with you to make you wealthy. Are you seeing this? Because it's the wealth of the sinner that's laid up for the just. So if, if you're not Letting the grace of God empower you and charge you up and mold you into being the just. The wealth of God is not for you. The wealth of God is for those that are just. And, and let's talk about what it means to be just. The Bible says that the blood of Jesus has justified you. Even the resurrection of Jesus was evidence of your justification. Meaning when Jesus rose after three days, it was it was the confirmation, the receipt. You know how you get a receipt after you purchase something? Well, it shows you the, the resurrection of Jesus was the receipt of your justification.
It was the receipt that the transaction had happened. It was the receipt that wealth cometh, that money cometh, that increase cometh, that abundant life is now in operation to whosoever will receive it. And see, what's so amazing about the kingdom of heaven, the father is not a respecter of persons. So it's not about your skin, how your skin looks. It's not about your height. It's not about your weight in your body. Wealth cometh to you right now. Money cometh to you right now. It's not about your history. Money cometh to you right now. In the kingdom of heaven, you never have to get jealous of anybody because you, got, you have your own signature inheritance. You don't have to look at somebody and say, oh, they got more than me. Oh, they got more houses than me. You got a lot of houses too, so why are you mad at them? The same way, you don't, even if you're a preacher, you ain't even got to look at somebody and say, oh, they got more people listening to them than me. Because you got a lot of people that are, are scheduled to listen to you as well. In the kingdom of heaven, there's abundance. The Lord doesn't like restrictions. That's why it grieves the Holy Spirit when you play with your flesh and you operate in doing things apart from him. Because now you're restricting him from doing what he wants to do. He needs the atmosphere of cooperation from you. You have to cooperate with the Holy Ghost to get to your wealthy place. Money cometh is your destiny. Money cometh has been your destiny before you left your mother's womb and they slapped you on the booty. Before they slapped you on the booty, money cometh. See, the plan of God be delayed oftentimes until you get 30 and 40 and 50 and 60. And you were supposed to have been rich. But there's so many things that are occupying you that's disrespectful to the spirit. The spirit is disrespected by your decisions. How are he going to make you rich when riches is in pleasuring the spirit of God? How are he going to make you wealthy when wealth is in making the spirit of God happy? Satisfying him, making him feel your love and admiration for his brilliance, intelligence, his smartness, his wisdom. He wants somebody to acknowledge him in all their ways. The wealth of God is, is, is going to happen to you now. Now is the time for wealth and riches to be unfolded for you to see physically. It's no longer a talking time. This is the demonstration of the spirit and wealth. You, you become an anointed with the Holy Ghost and wealth. Remember what the word of God said that uh, Stephen, how uh, he was anointed with the Holy Spirit and wisdom. The Holy Spirit, he's not stressed out about how to facilitate finances to his children. It's an easy thing for him. What's hard is your heart. What's hard is your head. It's easy for the Lord to release plenteousness and abundance and surplus and financial raises into your life. Is easy for him. Now, I want to say this to you. That's why I don't let people decide how I respond and how I um, react. When people do you wrong in life, let them do you wrong. Because when the Holy Spirit finished with the matter, you're going to get the blessing and you'll get double for your shame. 
do you know the area of shame is not always where you miss God and you repent? Sometimes the area of shame is when you do what God say and it look like somebody that is of the devil is defeating you. It looked like somebody that is of evil intent is overthrowing you like they're getting the advantage. That is shameful. You get double for your shame. God pays you when people wrongs you. So if anybody ever comes into your life and do you dirty, rejoice because your financial status is upgrading. Now, I, I want to get real wrong. A lot of people's wealthy place is in disconnecting from their mother. <laughs> uh, that's why you'll never be wealthy. Watch my words. Watch my words. You'll never be wealthy. Because your wealthy place is in disconnecting from your mother. It's not staying connected to her. A lot of people's wealthy place is disconnecting from their biological parents. And that's why you'll never be wealthy because you ain't going to do it. But when we fast forward in time and we, we revisit this revelation, because see, this is a raw anointed now I'm speaking to you under. When we revisit this revelation, you'll understand, okay, that's why I'm trying to, that's why I'm trying to beg people money in order for them to buy my medication for me. That's why I'm trying to beg people to, to, to help me out. I, 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 I ain't don't got no way to live. I don't got no food to eat. I don't know what I'm going to do tomorrow. I'm praying to God for a miracle. Yeah. But, but see, why does God give you truth to set you free from future regret? Truth sets you free from future regret. Um... I have people in my ministry because they destined to be rich. God do them a favor and move their parents out of the way. Like um, Sharika, her mama died. See, the Holy Ghost, when, 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 when he sets you up to be rich, he, he will move them out. Sometimes he'll do it for you. And there's a lot of, uh, of you all that, that watch me that it happened to, not because I didn't call your name, don't, don't, but I'm, I'm just, I'm just like freestyling. Not because I ain't call your name, it don't mean that you're not in the equation, but the Holy Spirit will move them out the way because the, the core that they're carrying is poverty. <laughs> your connectivity to them not making you rich. As long as you're connected to them, you're going to be broke, baby. You're going to be working at that job. You don't like working? Well, baby, you're going to be at that job. You're going to be at the same job. You're going to be at, you're going to be at the same job, baby. You don't want to disconnect from nobody. You're going to be at the same place. Yeah, you you can all the way down to your toes, from your head to your toes. You can shake your tail feather. You can drop down and get your ego. It's still going to be legal that until you disconnect from your biological parents, you ain't going to enter into your wealthy place. Now, I want you to hear this. Do you know that you can live in the presence of your parent and disconnect from them? Uh, let me show you this. Say like you over in your 20s, your 30s, and the Holy Spirit done revamped your life and you end up with your parents. You're living with your parents. Your parents don't know the Lord. You can disconnect from them and still be amongst the, the housing that they're in because that is the hide by the brook cherry for you. 
but you're not taken in their doctrine and their mentality and their way of thinking. But you can help them out. You can take the trash out. You could clean the dishes. You could clean the house for them. You could be nice. You could be generous. You can assist them, but you're not letting them manipulate your mind with that same philosophy that they have that's carrying poverty. You, I, you, you, you know, that's what I'm saying. I ain't say be disrespectful. I ain't say cuss them out. I didn't say talk to them like a dog. But I'm telling you, guard your heart with all diligence. Because what they're carrying is poverty. <laughs> I'm talking to you apostolically. I'm talking to you apostolically. All right. Let me go further. Wealth and riches is on the heart of God. And this is why he rebukes you when he sees you injuring the momentum for the wealth transference to happen. No, no, no. I want you to listen to me very clearly. If you take a notes, remember that. Wealth and riches are on the heart of God. And he rebukes you when he sees you injuring the momentum for the wealth transference to happen. God gets angry with the righteous. When you start messing up his money endeavor, God has a money scheme. To burden down your bosom with financial blessing. With bountiful blessing. And when he sees you affecting the itinerary of increase. The itinerary of increase. The itinerary of increase. He starts to rebuke you. Rebuke is evidence that your financial inheritance is being jeopardized by your folly. Whoa, 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 whoa. Did, oh, my goodness. Did you, did you catch that? Rebuke is evidence that your financial inheritance is being jeopardized by your folly. Let me give you the mystery of folly. Folly is the overflow of selfishness. Self-centeredness is the journey to junk. Self-centeredness. Self-destruction is the after party. Self-destruction is the after party of self-centeredness. The wages for distraction is destruction. 